Okay, today I am using a six by six inch Frederick's Red Label canvas, and we will eventually do these techniques on a larger canvas. So this whole painting is technically a palette knife painting, but you can take these palette knives and trade them in for a fork and a spoon. That's right, we're gonna do this entire painting using a fork and a spoon. You can use plastic ones if you like, they don't have to be metal ones. All right, let's get started laying in the sky. I'm gonna use my spoon and I'm gonna be using the back of the spoon. I have cobalt blue and titanium white. You can use whatever colors you like. I'm just pulling some out and kind of mixing them loosely until I have a color I like. Maybe about right there for the top. So it's a little on the darker side. Just get a good amount of paint on the back of your spoon and start wiping it across the top. The nice thing about using a spoon as opposed to a knife is I can put a good amount of pressure on it and it doesn't scrape the paint off unless I use the edge like that. Let's pull a little more white into that, make a little bit of a lighter color. Start just below it, just like when we're using a brush. If you're getting a lot of texture, you're just not picking up enough paint. So make sure that you've got kind of a ball of paint in the back of your spoon. See that? You don't want a smear of paint. A smear is not enough. Just go right up into that previous color, just like when we're using a brush. And right back down and look at how easily that blends. I'm just going to wipe some of that off and work on blending this a bit. I just have a little bit too much paint, I think. So it's giving me kind of a hard time to blend. There we go. And then lightly, just back and forth. A little more white. right below and right up you can kind of if you've got a little hole that's not getting filled just kind of tap it with the tip of the spoon and then go over it to smooth it out so i'm only going down about three quarters of the way down my canvas Make sure that's all blended in. I'm gonna wipe off my spoon on a paper towel so that it's pretty clean. And we're gonna make some clouds. I'm just gonna come in and kind of touch the tip of the spoon into the white. Just decide on somewhere for the clouds. And I'm gonna put the spoon right here onto the canvas. So I'm not just gonna plop that paint right down. I'm gonna focus on putting this part of the spoon on the canvas, so like that. See, the tip of the spoon is not flat on the canvas. And then just kind of nudge. You can go back, break it up a little. Just try not to go over it too much so that you end blending it, so that you end up blending it all out. Let's get a tiny bit more. And same thing. Super easy palette knife clouds without even using a palette knife. Get a nice puffy, puffy cloud day. I'm gonna take these clouds all the way down. Very soon, I want to do this same technique with a stormy sky. So make sure if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed so that you can come hang out when we do that. I just have a little smear of white. I just picked up a tiny bit, just to kind of add hints of it. You can take your spoon right here on the, the fattest part and just use that to kind of smooth out any areas. So that's what's nice about using a spoon is there's always a clean spot 
to use for something else, unlike a palette knife. See, I'm using the edge there to just kind of burnish those colors. I think with a regular palette knife, you gotta stop and wipe it off and kind of bulk up. There we go. And now I've got some ultramarine and yellow oxide. We're gonna do some distant trees. So I'm gonna pull these together and mix up a very dark green. So it's gonna lean more toward the ultramarine blue side. Just kind of using the tip of my spoon. Another way I've found is really easy to mix colors is to just kind of tap it like that. That way you don't end up covering the whole back of the spoon. You can kind of keep it toward the tip of the spoon if that's where you need it. Just kind of pull them together, squidge them around and tap them together. I wanna keep as much of this color to the tip of the spoon as possible. Now I'm gonna use really light pressure, really just touching the paint to the canvas. I'm not touching the spoon down to the canvas all the way. I'm just kind of smearing it on there and look how thick that paint application is. Very thick, nice and impasto. And I forgot to mention that for the most part, I am just using basics. My yellow oxide so far is the only one that's heavy body. Wipe it off when you pick up too much of that cloud cover, that cloud color on your spoon. And it really doesn't matter. You can do this with all heavy body. You can do it with all basics. Whatever you have, whatever you prefer. All right, at the bottom there, I'm just gonna take my spoon. I'm kind of putting the, the tip of the spoon flat on the canvas at the bottom and just kind of smearing that out to get rid of some of the texture and so I can start defining where my field is going to be. I'm going to wipe off my spoon again. And I'm going to get some yellow oxide. I did end up picking up a tiny hint of that green, and that is okay. I'm going to bring it over here and mix it into some white. I want a really pale color. Nice and pale. All right, so see I've got a good amount of paint on there. For the most part, I'm gonna be using kind of this edge of the spoon, on the back, of course. So right where I made that line, I'm gonna take the edge of my spoon and just lightly, again, I'm just touching the paint to the canvas, really. Just kind of start sliding that back and forth. I'm gonna grab a little bit of burnt umber just to change my color a little bit. continue along over here. Don't put too much pressure. Don't gouge down into the paint. I'm just laying that paint on it, going over the bottom edge of that last color. Since these colors are different, it's picking up a little bit of that green underneath and blending it, blending it in, and that's nice. I like that. I'm going to grab a bit more yellow oxide now and throw it on the carpet. Don't tell Vince. Also, don't tell him I'm using the good spoons. And I have some cadmium yellow medium. I'm going to mix it just in that same spot. Just start somewhere. I'm really just kind of going by where I have white spots of the canvas showing. So I've got some white spots right there. We'll go ahead and fill that in. Every time I go back for more, I'm going to intentionally change my color. So I just pulled a little extra white into that. I just want it to look like kind of a wild, overgrown field. So I don't want it to look real smooth. There's quite a bit of texture in here too, which I really like. And again, this is just basics paint. So you don't have to use heavy body paint. Now, as I come down the canvas, I'm gonna start deepening the color. So I got a little more yellow and I picked up a bit more of that green, a little bit more burnt umber. I'm mixing it in that same spot. So there, that color's a little bit darker. Maybe I'll brighten it up with just a hint of some cad yellow medium.
nice and thick texture there. I'm gonna change that color, get a good amount of cad yellow medium. Sorry guys. The close in zoom like that on a little six inch canvas, sometimes I can't tell where, where I am. So that's a little bit brighter. It's roughly the same value, so it's just as dark, but it's just a little brighter in, in color. I'm just going to take a tiny bit of that with a bit more white. It's that same brighter color I just used. And I just want to kind of pop a bit of brightness right back here. Just feel free to change it wherever you like. And if you wanted this to be a field of flowers, you could add little dashes of color. Since it's, you know, fall, Right now I decided I'll just keep it looking like a, a dry field or a wheat field that's ready for harvest. Now I've got some un, uh, burnt umber, put a little yellow oxide in there. Just kind of a nice dark golden brown color. And I'm gonna load it on the bottom edge of my spoon this time. I'm gonna start from the bottom of my canvas and just kind of streak it upward a bit. That's okay that it's picking up some of that yellow and blending it in there. See how I just changed kind of the direction down there. Don't draw a hard line. This is an overgrown field. So we don't want it to be real geometric. Maybe don't use a spoon that has accidentally been through the garbage disposal because it's, scr it's scratching my canvas. Let's throw a little ultramarine into that mixture because the ultramarine and the burnt umber make a really nice dark color. So we just want to darken this up again and I am going to load it on the bottom edge of my spoon just like before. Let's darken it a bit down here at the bottom. Let's finish up our trees while we give this bottom area a minute to, to dry. So I have a little more cad yellow medium. I'm gonna pick a bit up and mix it in with this green that we used before. So it's not a lot different, but it's, it's just a little bit brighter. And I'm gonna come in here and just kind of touch that brighter color, just kind of into a few areas. Don't try and blend it. Let it, let it stand apart. And really just kind of at the top. We want our trees to be darker and seem, seem substantial toward the bottom. Let's just go straight into that yellow and mix that on our spoon there. And just add a couple more little bright pumps there and our trees are gonna be about done. So there we are, we are almost done. Let's just finish up our little uh, straw bits or wheat shafts or whatever down here and we're finished. All right, I'm gonna use my fork and I'm gonna get a bit of cad yellow medium, just kind of squidge back and forth like that, get it between the tines and just really all over them. A fork isn't gonna spread a whole lot of paint, but it, it's nice for texture. And if we can spread just a little bit of paint with it, that will be perfect. Let's come in here, I'm gonna grab some of that yellow and we'll just kind of squidge those two colors together, maybe with a little bit of white. Just a nice brighter color. I'm gonna use the side of my fork. Decide which way you want your field to be bending. Since a fork is bent, you know, if I want my field to be going that way, I don't wanna use my fork this way because it'll push it that way. So, 
I'm really just going to kind of touch with the edge of my fork and kind of streak. You can just tap, or you can kind of lightly scratch upward. It's not depositing a whole lot of color, but that's okay. You can even come into your color and just scrape at the side like that. If you want to get a bit, just kind of tap. ultramarine and burnt ember for a nice dark color again. Make sure it's on the edge of my fork and down here toward the bottom because we want it to be darker at the bottom. That's going to help indicate some depth to these plants that are growing. Kind of use the fork flat like that to push some in there. Maybe we'll just insinuate some little seed heads. So I have a little blob of white. Mix it in with my cad yellow medium here. I wiped my fork off, but it's not perfectly clean, so I still have some brown on there, and that's okay. I just want a nice bright color. Really just loading it up on that one last time there. And I'm going to come in here, just kind of touching the tip of the tine on there, and Tap little bits of that color on. Well, we can also take one of the other tines. So this one is kind of clean. And I'm just gonna scrape into here to almost make it look like maybe there's some trunks or branches or, you know, whatever. Just little bits of scratching. And that's really it. I'm gonna see if I can sign it with, with my fork. 